That uh, that track was uh, from my uh, my brother's old band called Tone Logic uh, that he plays with uh, Chris Rogowski and some other friends. Chris still is out there playing with Band of Seahorses, but Chris hasn't gotten me any tracks yet to play. So that's a uh, that's an original called Pushover, which is my favorite song they ever did. And uh, my brother Brandon is the drummer. He also hasn't gotten me any tracks. I have all of this music surrounding me all the time. And I went on Facebook and I said, give me some 30 second and some 60 second tracks and nothing. Very, very upsetting. So today I'm here with our, uh, I, like I, I said to Nick in the, in the, in the ready room, uh, I said one of our not so bad council members I think that's what I said. Uh, Randy Scannell. I say your last name correctly? Close enough. How do you say it? Uh, think of channel without the... just put Scannell. It Scannell. Really? Yeah. Okay. It See. used to have an O in front of it, actually. So does everybody say it the way I do? Uh, oh, yeah. I'd There's say all over the place. Said, yeah, it's all over the place. Yeah. So I've Kids seen... used to call me Scandal when I taught. Okay. Well, so that's actually closer. <laughs> so I, okay. Oh, See, we're already getting into good stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. So you taught. I didn't know that. So... Um, all right, so I'm going to get right into it. I yeah. have some like ready questions, but like this is your show, so you can talk about whatever you want. Okay, so you're on city council, but uh, I kind of want to go back to you know the uh, uh, version 1.0, Randy. Okay, okay? so uh, why are you here? I'm here because you invited me. Okay, so <laughs> didn't know anything about this. So I'm glad you invited me. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. That's su- I'm super honored. For sure. Um, so, all right. So that's what I think everybody thinks I'm asking when I say why are you here. But uh, I kind of want to back it up even more. Cool. So, like, why are you here? Here, huh? Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I'm here because uh, I don't think we would have met if I wasn't an alder. And I became an alder because I believe in practical, responsible governance. I don't think we have a lot of that. And I want to make a difference. So that's why I'm here. So uh, that's my purpose. So Nick, we get to charge him for this, right? Yeah. Uh, sure. If you want me to pass it through. That yeah, we should done. charge him for the advertising. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's campaign funds, right? So that's it, deductible yeah. donation. It, oh, well, definitely. And it's automatic. Money. Well, it could be an in-kind <laughs> donation. There we are. It's not going to be. <laughs> I just have to approve it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In unkind. <laughs> it's going to be unkind. <laughs> <laughs> so. Okay, so uh, have you? Uh, how long have you been in Green Bay? Uh, most of my life. Okay. Uh, when I was four, I lived a year in Marinette. Uh, lived a year in Monterrey, Mexico, uh, teaching. Uh, lived a month in Pakistan, teaching. Yeah, that got cut short. Wow. Uh, it was 2001, and 9/11 was the first day of school. For real? Yeah. Wow. See, that's amazing. <laughs> you have amazing stories already. I'm super excited. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So tell me more about that stuff, that, the teaching. Oh, the teaching? Well, uh, always wanted to be a teacher, you know, going back to high school. And uh, my older sister was a, got, became a teacher. She went into the field. And uh, But by the time I graduated in 74, uh, the enrollments were starting to go down, and there was a glut on the market of teachers. So my guidance counselor and the counselor from GB and my sister said, don't go into teaching. Right. And uh, computers was a big and upcoming thing. Go into computers. Well, I didn't want to go into computers. And I, but I listened to them. I didn't go into teaching, <laughs> which was dumb. Uh, so then back in the mid-'80s when I finally figured, well, I got to do something. So I was going to the tech school. I was going to go into drafting, and uh, even though I don't believe in the draft. Nice. Yeah. I see where this is going. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, that's not true either. That's just a dumb pun. I do believe in the draft. Uh, I do uh, that too. Yeah. I, I drop things and I'm like, no, I totally believe in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, I heard they needed teachers. So I transferred out and went to GB and got my teaching license and uh, uh, had planned on actually moving out of the area because uh, I was going to go into social studies, and I knew at that time, even even though they needed teachers, they didn't need social studies teachers, right. you know, in the area. And uh, actually, I had spent quite a bit of my life trying to get out of Green Bay. I came very, very close to moving to New York in the in the late seventies, and uh, but everything fell through. And anyway, uh, so I went to GB, got my certification, and had planned to move out, but I met. Rose, whom I subsequently ended up marrying, 
or she married me, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, so that tied me to the area again. So I stuck nice. to the area, yeah. And uh, so we both went into teaching, and uh, I quickly found out that in the area I wasn't going to be able to teach social studies. So I did a lot of subbing at first, and uh, I did a lot of subbing in special education, which uh, was a field you can't get a certification for that at GB. So they just kind of touched mm. on it a little bit, not much. I didn't really know much about it until I started subbing. And uh, it really clicked. I really loved special education. So I went to Silver Lake College, got that, and then I started a career in special education. I mm. uh, taught in a number of different districts. Um, and my wife, when she graduated, she didn't end up getting a teaching job. So she ended up going into business. And, uh, but we knew people who had taught overseas, and we had always thought once the kids were up and out and taken care of, that we would try it. Because like after a year or so, uh, when you're out of college, districts no longer look at your application. Mm -hmm. It doesn't pay to apply to get into teaching anymore. And she still wanted to be a teacher. So we'd teach overseas, and uh, if we liked it, we'd stay. And if we didn't, we'd come back. She'd have the teaching experience, districts that would look at her right. and maybe she'd get a job and that's actually what happened she wow. she's working in the green bay school district now wonderful yeah wow. as an esl teacher so um the social studies thing's interesting my brother justin uh went to school for teaching social studies yeah. even now like there's you'd have Commit. to be, you'd have to be able to teach in four languages <laughs> and and t and also teach science right yeah yeah um and he actually, that brought him down to Milwaukee for a little while. So he went up to Marinette to teach for a while. And then he went I to. I taught Marinette yeah, for a year. Yeah, that was just that was just a few years ago. And then uh, uh, and then he ended up down in Milwaukee where he was, uh, he had to go to a charter school. And that charter school is now defunct this year. So like he moved back to Green Bay yeah. just, last, just last weekend. I had to help him move. So that's kind of interesting. So you've been all around the world and you ended up back here. Yeah. You know, I think like talking to all of these people, all of these friends I have friends in quotes right yeah, yeah because like you know i look who you're talking to right <laughs> and uh they i a lot of people say they you know they want to leave and then they come back anyway or they or they can't leave <laughs> and then they're, they're caught in the gravity <laughs> mm -hmm. and yeah i mean that's been that's been with me too like i'm a lifer like i've been here forever but i gotta get out in january and february <laughs> yeah <laughs> so whoever, break. whoever yeah. i interview in january yeah. and february it's gotta be down in yeah. austin or something yeah. Yeah. yeah but we just did 10 days in london so Wonderful. That was See, I, I have yet to go to Europe. I was saying that to, to Rhonda. I'm, I feel so sheltered sometimes. So I'm v living vicariously through my friends now. That, that's the one. That's what friends are for. Right. Yep. That you're going to take one for the team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So let's uh, let's let's drill into Green Bay a little bit more. You are you are on our city council. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, and you are, you know, you didn't say stuck, but uh, you're here, uh, and you know you've been, but you've been other places. So, what's your what's your favorite thing about Green Bay? Oh, all the development that's going on now, and the growth, and the diverse, diversity. You know, we're really starting to take off as a city. Uh, for the longest time, I thought developmentally our city was very backward. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's why I wanted to get out. Of, I wanted to live in a big town. And, uh, you know, we put the university out in the boondocks instead of downtown. We tore down our downtown. And, uh, I mean, uh, at the Neville, they have a picture, a great big panoramic picture in 1960s, downtown Green Bay. Yeah. And all the old buildings and all the right. – it's just fantastic. And then, you know, uh, 20 years later, you'd look at downtown Green Bay, a uh, whole different picture. And, yeah. and uh, so, but now I think we really got some neat development going. We got some, uh, 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 we're growing, we're getting more diverse. It's, it's becoming a more exciting place. Yeah. So the growth you like. The growth. So uh, I spend most of my time at Kavarna, not yeah. not at Starbucks, but I was <laughs> at Starbucks last night. Uh, Gina and I stopped over at Starbucks and I was actually, I had a moment where I'm just I'm looking around and I'm, uh, I'm like, um, very like diverse yeah. like it, it felt like i was not in green bay right and that was that was at the starbucks on military mason yeah and like uh i don't know where all these people came from but i don't they didn't they didn't grow up here no like uh <laughs> and you, i mean i could immediately tell that so like every color it was amazing i loved it yeah like uh um i'm a fan of diversity too yeah um yeah so i don't know i mean i live on planet earth so i guess like it's to me it's weird to not be but whatever um, so, 
Uh, let's get into uh, maybe maybe this is just kind of a repeat of the teaching stuff, but uh, um, I've asked this question of Rhonda and Gina, so some of these questions are kind of repeats, but they, but they're, I think they went over pretty good and led okay. to some good discussions. Well, so, let's give them a try. So, <clears throat> uh, what is the thing you're most proud of, or a fun story, like before either before you came, you know, before uh, before city council, let's say, like something that you're really proud of, or a fun story. A fun story. And then obviously the next story is going to be since you've been there. So since, yeah. <laughs> you, can, you can mentally prepare. <laughs> wow. A fun story. Well, um, how about uh, the journey from, from Green Bay to Lahore, Pakistan? That was a fun story. Okay. I'm sure it was. Yeah. <laughs> we uh, ended up spending the, having to sleep the night in Heathrow, which is a fun time, let me tell you. And then, of Why? course, our- Why is that? Like, I don't, I don't they, know anything about it. Well, you're sleeping in an airport. Okay. You're sleeping in a chair. You know, okay. You're trying to turn your, your luggage into a bed. Oh you know? <laughs> so the whole night you spent there? Yeah. Oh, geez. Okay. Yeah. Homelessness. I uh, uh, got a taste of that. Uh, and then, of course, we had to take care of our luggage, and it was overweight, some of it. So one was one piece of luggage was under, one was over. So we had right in the middle of the airport with all the people waiting to check their luggage. We're switching stuff around. A lot of fun. But then on the uh, flight from London to uh, Lahore, uh, it was interesting in that it was kind of like, you, you know, you see a, a, in a movie a, a, an old bus like a, 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 on an me- old Mexican road mm-hmm. and, and you got the chickens up, uh, you know, oh, and, no. yeah. and, and there were people, they had just bags of all kinds of stuff, their computers, and, and, I mean, huge, com- it was, it was kind of like that atmosphere. Right. You know? I felt like I was on a, 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 a bus going down an old dirt road wow. <laughs> to some, you know little village it was and uh, uh, unfortunately one woman was was got air sick she had a real hard time so somebody that you went with no no oh, no just a separate okay. just a, yeah, separate but it turned out she ended up being one of the teachers at the school we were going to wow so it was a it's a bilingual school uh, well actually not in Lahore because English is one of the official languages so but I uh, they wanted uh, uh, teachers English teachers uh, from around the world. There's a baccalaureate school where so you need to have foreign teachers, so they, they recruit foreign teachers. And I would teach world history, uh, English, wow. like you would teach English, right. and uh, world literature. So um, we land about 1 o'clock in the morning, the whole time. And it's out on a tarmac. Uh, you don't go into the airport. They bring a bus out to you. And uh, I step off the plane, and it was like somebody stuck a bar of soap in my mouth. Oh, yeah. Oh, it was awful, the pollution. Mm. And uh, after about the second day of that, I was thinking, I can't do this. I got to get out of here. I got to get out of here. (laughs) But by the third day, for better or worse. You got used to it. I was acclimated. Oh, boy. Yeah, yeah. And it was interesting. In Lahore, you, you look up, you never see the sun. It's always a haze. Really? Always a haze. Never see clouds, just a haze. Yeah. So it's one o'clock in the morning, and uh, our apartments are on the campus. You know, they're putting us up. So the school had buses there. Uh, Unbeknownst to us, there were several of us on that plane who were going to be teaching there. So it's one o'clock in the morning, and uh, I'm in the front seat with Yosef, and uh, uh, we're going down. We see ox carts. Oh, no. Going down the road. Just in the street. Pulling flatbeds, wow. and the drivers are sleeping on the flatbeds. Oh, my goodness. We go, we see the police. They've got somebody pulled over, and they're all heavily armed, the police. And uh, they motion for us to go over. And the driver points to me and shakes his finger, no, and keeps driving. And it turns out um, the police like to hit up their own population. They don't like to pull over foreigners to hit them up for... Oh, really? Yeah, because they, they don't want the reputation. So... Wow. Yeah. So then we get to the, the uh, That's campus. probably everywhere, though. We probably are that way, too. Oh, I'm not going to say. Our police department is the finest in the world. 
Well, I, I've given them lots of money. Yeah. Oh, good. Speeding tickets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not for a long time, yeah, yeah, but when yeah, I was yeah. younger. Yeah. yeah. Really doesn't go to the police, though. I get that. <laughs> well, you. you haven't gotten any of it because yeah. I haven't had a ticket in a while. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, and everything in Pakistan is walled in. They have brownouts, so security is armed guards at gates. Wow. And so we weren't expecting that either. So we come in, and uh, we have all these heavily armed guards say, oh, let us help you with your luggage. We didn't argue. Yeah. Take the luggage. <laughs> uh, so just coming in to uh, Pakistan was quite the, quite the adventure. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So, um, but y- you enjoyed that. Yeah, it was a fantastic experience. Yeah. You know, something I'd never experienced before. Great place to visit, but you wouldn't want to live there. Well, uh, at the time, I was looking forward to living there at least really? a year. Okay. Yeah, it would have been a uh, wonderful, wonderful adventure. Uh, um, there was, it turns out, we ended up meeting some of the other teachers. There was a, a Irishman who was a music major and going for his master's in drumming, and he had a Sufi drummer as his master uh, teaching him. Wow. So he had plan. We had planned. He was going to take me around to all these Sufi festivals and out to the little village wow. right outside of Lahore, where his uh, his Sufi master lived. And uh, you know, so it would have been there would have been quite the adventure in many many ways. Um, uh, it really is uh, eye opening the, the poverty that you know is just horrendous. Really. You know, we live not far from uh, what was known as the Ditch Road. It was uh, supposedly one-way highway on each side, but you would be going down the highway, and an ox, uh, a donkey oh. cart would be coming against you oh or something. You know, I mean, there's no rule. Driving is like driving in a video game. There were just no rules. Oh, you yeah. Know, or, or rules very in the loose sense of the term. Right. You know, you'd have stoplights on a on a highway. Sometimes they're working. Sometimes they're not. You'd have speed bumps on a highway, and at night. And this is like in a city area, or this yeah. is more rural. Well, it we were kind of on the outskirts of the city, okay. but we were in we were in the city limits. Wow, that's so crazy! Wow, yeah. wow. Um, so that's a great story. And then it got cut short by some crazy terrorists. Yeah, that's even crazier. Like that. That's when you were there. There. Yeah. Wow. Um, so next question is: uh, Give me a crazy story since you've. And it doesn't have to be a city council, council story, story, but you know, since since you've been. You know, in in the public like, sphere a little more. A crazy story. Well, it doesn't. I said a fun story. First, fun story. But, okay. Yeah. But, let's, let's but you know, you know, it just goes there, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. On the council, or let's see, city, or, or just a fun story say, about something, some, or or something that you're proud of, an accomplishment, or both. It's your show. Well, you know, uh, teaching. Uh, I was pretty proud of my uh, teaching. You know, yeah. working with uh, special education. It's a uh, uh, a unique situation where you, it's the one job, teaching job, where you're actually working with everybody, not just working with students, but you're working with parents, you're working with administration, you're working with staff, and you're coordinating everything to make the best possible education for the student. And I'm proud of that work. Absolutely. Yeah. And that was a lot of fun. Yeah. You know, uh, my last teaching job was at uh, Menominee Indian High School in Kashina. And that was very unique too, you know, the cultural experiences. They'd have uh, their lacrosse game every year. Uh, to after the first thunderstorm, and uh, you know it was, and they had their own uh, for music class. Uh, at, when I first started, anyway, it was mostly drumming and singing. Native drumming and singing was wow. the main focus of it. So it was, it was, you know, you'd start the school year smudging. Yeah, you know the whole. So you do. You've done everything. Well, <laughs> a lot, <laughs> a few things. <laughs> You're not going to take that bait, huh? No. All right. No. All right. Oh, no. I got, few, I got a few things left to check off. So, um, uh, what would you say to to convince someone else to run for public office? So, we kind of had that like sort of a yeah. parenthetical conversation yeah. on Facebook about that kind of thing, and it sounds like you are very encouraging of people, you know, entering entering that. Yeah, I, I encourage people to to get involved politically every way you possibly can. I think it's uh, important and a lot of fun. You know, uh, I used to be not as politically involved, obviously, as I am now. Mm-hmm. Uh, at one time, matter of fact, I used to be kind of proud that I thought it wasn't important to be politically important. I thought both political parties were probably pretty close to the middle of the road, generally speaking, yeah. and that it didn't make a big difference. 
I don't think that's true anymore. <laughs> really? I think and, there's a lot of talk, but I, I still feel that that way. Oh, uh, no. I'm like, uh. Well, no, I've, <laughs> I've had an awakening, I think. And, uh, really? I became very politically active. Okay. You know, when Act 10 came down. Oh, you know, okay. Uh, all the rallies, all the protests, all the, uh, you know, went to Madison a few times. Um, uh, and in town, what was going on, uh, I, I got involved with helping uh, uh, volunteering for uh, political campaigns, you know, and the rallies of those things and, and uh, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so I became very politically active, and it, it, it's a lot of fun volunteering, especially volunteering, because right. you can pick and choose what you do when you do it. Right. You know? Right. But it's pretty exciting to, to get involved with a, a lot of the politicians and, and, and a lot of the political stuff that's going on. And uh, as far as being an alder, it's just been a ball. I mean, I just had a blast. I mean, I, I've been meeting all kinds of wonderful, interesting people, doing all kinds of wonderful, interesting developments and events and projects. Uh, so you get to be involved in that. Uh, I, I, I have, you know, you help out your constituents. I've been very successful in, in helping out a lot of people with problems they're having in their neighborhoods. And that's a lot of fun to be, you know, be doing that. Um, Anything stick out in your mind when you say that? Um, uh, let's see, uh, it, it, nothing major. I mean, there's, uh, well, the most, probably the most unique one was, uh, Mr. Farrell. Uh, I finally call him Farmer Farrell. He, uh, uh, planted garden in, in his front yard, vegetable garden. Oh, sure. You know, and, and, uh, there's nothing wrong with that, but he carried it over to the terrace, which is illegal. Okay. There are right. ordinances about, you know. So the area beyond the sidewalk. Yep, the area yeah. beyond the sidewalk. And uh, there's good reason for that. I mean, you don't want high plants to obstruct views. You don't want to uh, want uh, uh, waste going into the uh, curb, you know, sewer, sewer, straight to the sewer, straight to the river. Uh, so he took uh, the concerns that the ordinance addresses and addressed them himself. He made a big berm between you know his garden and the curb and planted it with grass so it would absorb anything uh he kept all the plants in that area low to the ground mm. so he he met the spirit of the law mm -hmm. so i was able to get an an exception wow and he was able to grow his i was not aware of that that's yeah, that he, is pretty cool yeah because you, you know you, you you hear that right like oh that's a stupid rule right yeah like you understand why it was a rule at one point but like really yeah, yeah. so that, yeah that is good um so um i know a few people that that want to run for office what would you say to them uh i would say uh get some training because that does make you know my i all my background with working on campaigns made a big difference, Okay, I think. Uh, uh, so, I mean, both the Democratic Party, the Republican mm -hmm. Party, the Chamber of Commerce, uh, other groups will have trainings. Find out about those. Go to all of them because they're all, well, if it's uh, county or city, those are nonpartisan races. So, sure. you know, I, I took as much, I went to the Chamber uh, training uh, uh, and the Democratic Party training and, and get as much training as you can. How much do those cost? Oh, they're free. Okay. They're free. You know. I knew that. It was a yeah. softball. Yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> and I hit it out of the park. Yeah. Well, you, you know, you, you hit the ball. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's rare. <laughs> uh, uh, so go ahead. Yeah, I didn't so, mean to cut uh, you off. Uh, and then um, connect yourself with some good – get some good support. I mean, uh, uh, my wife is my treasure. It's good to have a treasure. Uh, it's good to have some people to uh, bounce some things off of as things come up, you know. Um, in fact, you want to you want to try and run a professional campaign. You know, you you want to probably have some fundraisers, raise some money, uh, so you don't have to put in all your own money, and uh, probably want to get some nice looking signs and have have a nice flyer done up and printed up. Uh, so a few things so, like that. But it's mainly you want to go knock on doors. You got to right. be able to knock on doors and talk to people. That's right. the key. So um, so I I think that's that's the key too. So how like uh. Roughly, like, what? How much money do you think it would take for like some kind of local election? Like, I don't know what kind of money we're talking about. We hear about the presidential ones where they're like spending like literally billions. billions. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah. Well, for the city, uh, depending upon where you go for the sign, the signs, and who who you go to for everything, I, I would think you know a thousand dollars would be comfortable. Okay. You know, 
that'd give you some wiggle room because you could do some mailings then and stuff too you know uh yeah you, you gotta do some shopping around get the best deal you know right, uh, uh, right. i go union usually okay uh but even then you want to shop around okay yeah so be a smart shopper be a smart yeah shopper. yeah so you think okay that's good um, so, uh, we're about like at the halfway point. So now I kind of turn it over just for a brief period over to Nick to talk about, uh, our studio here, uh, that, uh, uh, camera corner has been gracious enough to sort of sponsor this, uh, you know, silly little interview show. It's not that silly. Well, it's, it's been pretty silly. <laughs> I mean, it's not listed as comedy, right? We talked about that in episode zero. Oh, and she's really angry about that. <laughs> she, she thinks she's super funny. <laughs> well, there, there was a lot of laughing. I mean, and there's there's humor to the show, but, but I, I was laughing like with her, exactly, not at her, not at. So I have security footage to prove it. <laughs> so yeah, so go ahead, take it over, Nick. Yeah, well, I, you know, honestly, I think I'm probably gonna end up making like, a, was that me? Sorry, <laughs> no, I think that was actually me. <laughs> okay, I'm I'm probably gonna end up making you like a, a commercial spot to run. Oh, good idea. To make it easier. Yeah. Because it's hard for me every time to just, <laughs> hey, come to Camera Corner where you can rent a studio and do whatever you want to do. Yeah. But, you know, like there's a lot of stuff here. You have, there is. You know, you got lighting, you got screens, and um, and you have, like when we came right. in, there, you had some clients in yeah, here. Yeah, I mean, and we all were doing just shooting some, uh, some commercials for another company, and, uh, you know, we have the podcast area, of course, that you're using, and we also do the live video feeds uh, straight to the internet. So um, talking to somebody right now about possibly doing a weekly series that she'll run on her website, and then uh, after the live broadcast, we can re-edit it and uh, actually send it out to the TV stations or the cable station and whatnot. Nice. So, you know, there's a lot of possibilities and my real goal for the Camera Corner Studio is to be affordable for anybody. I mean, if if you're willing to put a little more work into it and, you know, do the editing yourself, bring some of your own equipment, we can start as low as $65 an hour um, and then every service on top of that is a la carte. So you need a camera, the video cameras are an extra 30 bucks. If you need someone to run that camera, the person's 50 bucks. So, um, you know, we can really work with a company or a small, you know, business individuals even. I, I have some I'm friends. I'm an individual. You are an individual. It, well, well, you have a company page now, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. If you have a Facebook company page, that technically uh, makes you a company, doesn't it? Don't Don't tell the IRS. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you got to make money. You're, so proprietorship. you're fine. <laughs> you're fine. No, the, but yeah, I mean, that that's what's cool. I mean, I got a couple buddies that, you know, make YouTube videos. They, they do Let's Plays on YouTube and um, they're talking about coming in to, you know, kick it up a notch once a year and do something a little more professional. So we got so a lot they of come in and in and out. It's a couple hundred bucks usually for more. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, like I said, reasonable. as low as 65 bucks for one hour. And if you're making a five minute YouTube video, you might be able to make five, ten videos in your hour. Yeah. You know, so it's just talk to me. I'll help you be smart about how you use your time and, and get it as efficiently as we can. Yeah. And actually, uh, you know, uh, I, um, I I think you think I know everything there is to know about everything, which I appreciate. I thought you I, did. I, I, I love I love the ego boost and I need it a lot. I really do. <laughs> but uh, you've been super uh, helpful in giving suggestions like how to use the microphone, how to talk in the microphone that properly. Well. But but even like uh, even from the business end of things, you know, how to how to how to potentially get sponsorships, get the things paid right. for. Uh, I think your knowledge is uh, pff, worth 10 times what 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 people would be paying for literally you know if you're going to you know if you're going to a, a whatever you know a big city right yeah you pay thousands for what you're doing for your nickels well maybe i should charge more than you should <laughs> yeah All right. yeah not, but not me <laughs> <laughs> well it's much appreciated we're glad to have you elliot thank Thanks. you for using us yeah so do you, do you have a story to share or not i don't know like I like those because I, I think it like a, or anything unique happened in the last week or so or something you got planned. Maybe well, yeah, not. I mean, what we were just working on was uh, a combination of things. So what they're doing is uh, a video for their salespeople within the company so that they're familiar with the products that are available to them. So it, it's technically an internal training video. Hey, don't nice. forget, we sell this product. So they had some 
uh, about a two minute script they put up on the teleprompter. She read it a few times. Right. Uh, and then I took some still photos of the product and we did a little over the shoulder view so that you could see what it looks like to actually move the product and, and see all the different textures and motion. So, you know, we had a couple different backdrops. She did a couple of costume changes. So we actually shot, um, actually three months worth of material in those two hours. Wow. For a few hundred bucks. Right. I mean, the budget. That's so great. I, I'm going to come in well under budget, and she planned $500. So Nice. Wow. Yeah. See, I think that's amazing because I know like, I know what this stuff costs, like right. some, some of it. And some of it I don't know, which means it's probably a lot more than I well, think. Well, and the thing is it's, <laughs> it's efficient for us as Camera Corner yeah. because we already have it and use it for our on-site production services. Like when, right. when big charity organizations hold fundraisers at Lambeau Field, we do a lot of that stuff where we provide the AV support. Uh, the thing is the most expensive items are the items that get used the least. Hmm. So what I found is, you know, instead of charging $300 a day for this camera, that might be kind of expensive for some people, but if I can make it $30 an hour, right. It's a lot more affordable to a lot more people. So to, to mitigate the risk of charging lower amounts per use, we put it in our building with our security cameras, charge for it hourly. It's safe. We have somebody here that can help you if you, you know, really get stuck. But, you know, it's just an opportunity to, to better utilize our existing assets, really. And every time I come in, it seems like you're getting busier and busier. We are. Yeah, so, absolutely. It's definitely starting. So to you got to you got to slow it down a little bit because I'm afraid you're going to boot me. <laughs> <laughs> I won't I won't get too busy for you. If anything, you're a big part of the reason why we're nice. getting busy. So. I appreciate that. Thank you. There's always Thank one you. in the morning. There's always what? What did what? One in the morning. That's oh, true. Oh, 1 a.m. in, in the morning. The morning. I'm, that's I, true. Okay, I'm like one what? I have, <laughs> I have keys. We could do Elliot after dark. That's Ooh. that's possible. No, Ooh. nobody wants that. Nobody wants that. You blow we, in the dark. We can't. We can't go down that path. <laughs> <laughs> all right, back to Randy. Thanks, Nick. Uh, all right. So, um, any questions you think I should ask you? Like, what do you want to share with everybody? What do I want to share with What do you want to share with anybody? I don't know. Well, I could make plugs. Let's see. Anything about me? I'm, I'm, what about me? Okay. Well, tell me about your jacket. Okay. My Nehru jacket. Yeah. Nehru. Nehru. Okay. I, uh, as a young man growing up in the late 60s, early 70s, uh, Nehru jackets were kind of popular, and yeah. I did. I did have one. I bought one at Saint Finita de Paul. Wow! Uh, and I loved the hell out of it. And uh, in fact, I'm still mad at my parents. I I don't know how it is that ended up in their attic, but somehow <laughs> it ended up. Well, God knows from where there, but I, I lost it. And um, so I've always wanted another one. And really? uh, now that I'm an alder, I always wear a sport coat. It's my man purse. I got nice. all my stuff in it. So I decided I wanted a Nehru jacket. Um, and I had a fight with my wife. <laughs> but I finally, uh, she, as long as I didn't spend too much. So I went online and uh, I found a company out of South Carolina. And uh, I bought my jacket. And now I have my Nehru jacket. And so nice. whenever I'm not with my wife, I can wear my Nehru jacket. So and I got a really 60s looking one right here on Amazon. It's 28 bucks. I should pick it up. Sure. Then we could match. Ooh. <laughs> we, we could start a trend. So I didn't know how to spell we, Nehru. So it's N E H R U. Yeah. 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 Okay. He's the first uh, prime minister of uh, India. If, if you watch See, the know, movie Gandhi, he's one of the. So that's where I heard that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I know I heard that, but I. I, I maybe I heard it in relation to the jackets too. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. yeah. the beetle. It's often called the beetle yeah. jacket too because the Beatles made it really popular in the '60s. But right, yeah. yeah. Well, that's what I made. That's what I said when you when I first saw it. I'm like, so, so yeah. were you the inspiration yeah, for yeah. Sergeant get, Pepper? Get, get yours and we'll get the band together. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. That would be awesome. I think we'd probably be a pretty horrible band. Yeah, I'd have to be the singer. Go right ahead. <laughs> I'll harmonize. Oh, I don't know. You, you looked at me kind of weird, yeah. so I don't know now. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to my cheat sheet for some more go, questions. Cheat away. All right. So um, this is a question that I asked of uh, Rhonda and Gina. You sort of answered it already. You know, you did some teaching and stuff. But uh, um, <clears throat> other than city council, what other organizations are you? 
are you involved in? And, you know, maybe as a consequence of your work, but, you know, maybe separately just, you know, things, causes that you like and all that. Yeah, Tell yeah, me something about that. Well, I'm involved with the Democratic Party. Okay. Uh, they're the ones who actually pushed me into running. Uh, I didn't want to run. I wanted to stay a volunteer. Hmm. You know, volunteering's nice. Like I said, you choose what you do when you do it. Uh, but uh, I've also been involved with uh, Citizen Voices in Action, which is a group uh, composed mainly of uh, people who are or were homeless mm -hmm. and uh, some of the advocates and we're advocating for homeless issues. It's called Project what? Uh, it's called Citizen... What did I get projects from? I don't know. Okay. CVIA, Citizens Voices in Action. I was putting words together. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I've also been involved, and this group really doesn't have a name. Uh, it started with uh, Chief Molitor pulling okay. together. So that's a just a local group. It's just a local group okay. of a lot of the local uh, ethnic groups, and uh, getting together and uh, uh, building relationships and networking together and uh, seeing how we can make a positive impact on on the communities. Uh, matter of fact, we've. Uh, uh, started uh, uh, basketball, bring your own five uh, every uh, Saturday, one o'clock at Fisk Park. Uh, we're using the basketball court, and uh, if you don't bring your own five, uh, some people have truckled in. We 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 will make a group. We'll get you into oh, the nice. group, and we and we play basketball. Uh, basically, twelve to eighteen is what we're looking for to keep them a little busy. Okay. So 12 year olds, 18 year olds. Yep. Yeah, nice. At Fisk Park, uh, what day? Saturdays, was it? every Saturday. During summer. Yep. Okay. One o'clock. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm too old. I can't go. I'm sorry. You okay. could come and uh, keep time. <clears throat> I, I've been a timekeeper, and uh, believe me, it's not as How easy. How about if we just buy one of these things? No, I, well, you get to click the button to get it going. I, 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 uh, Wow, you think I'm worth nothing? I'm, I'm, I'm worth <laughs> hey, a, I'm worth hey. a, a, an electronic clock. Believe me, it's an important <laughs> job. They had me do it last time, and I failed. <laughs> so this is why know. we have this. If I had to count, I'd be like, "Oh, it feels like it's oh, been oh, ten oh, minutes." We got a clock, oh. but you know, I, I dropped it on, and it cleared out the time, or I I'd, I'd stop it, and then I'd forget to start it, or wow. you know, I mean, it's you know, I will you know, say, complicated man. Just a a, a quick interjection yeah. plug. Yeah. I stopped by Bertrand's the other day. They're having their store closing sale. Yeah. And there yeah. are some clocks there that they're still looking Ooh. to get rid of. And the know. possession thingies at the little lights that say which oh, way. To... We, we have a possession. Uh, we didn't have a light thing. We just have a. a oh, they're on sale. A, a, yeah. There we go. Yeah. Bertrand's is clearing out. So Nice. Good. <laughs> I'll let them know. I'll let the group know. So I was I was searching around to see if there was like a website or Facebook uh, for your for that group. Facebook, yeah. Like bring your own BYO five, I think. BYO five. Yeah, it's on Facebook. Burr, 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 burr. Oh yeah, there it is. Bring your own five. Okay. Yeah. So uh, it's just a search for the word spelled out. Bring your own five. Yeah. Or BYO five. The number yeah. five. Both of those work. Yeah, somebody did a good job with that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sharon, nice. Sharon, uh, and Terry did a great job. They, they've been cool. the main ones pushing this and putting this together. I mean, I just nice. been a tag along, uh, you know, helping out here and there as I can. And they're humble. Yeah, well, I'm sure you're it, not just a tag along. Well, I, I'm not a good uh, timekeeper, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's fun. Nice. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. Nice. And uh, and like uh, uh, we have we bring water. And and uh, Gatorades and stuff. So there's stuff. Playing yeah. stuff I didn't remember what it was called, but I did hear about this from somewhere. So it must have got a little media. It did get exposure. a little media attention. Nice, yeah. good. Yeah. You know, people talk about you know the media only talks about the bad stuff. I in Green Bay, I think that they're yeah. I, I don't we, have a problem. There's with a media. lot. There's the a lot does. of lot of great things going on, and they yeah. they cover most of the great things. Um, so speaking of that, so today is August thirteenth. Yeah. And when we're recording this, who knows when I'll get it out, <laughs> you know? So, like, it's not a plug for the event. I maybe should have plugged it before, but uh, although you still can't get them on iTunes yet. Um, so today's uh, Taste on Broadway. Taste on Broadway, yep. yeah. And uh, so that made me think of... Uh, asking you like what are your fa you, you said you're a fan of all the development and the diversity so what are your favorite downtown events what more do you think we can do anything missing well, one thing I would like to see I'd like to see more busking 
That's yeah. a big time atmosphere, you know, busking. And I would like to really promote that more. I'd like to. I remember in in Mexico, uh, you have uh, clowns or musicians on 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 the buses. You know, uh, I don't know. I, I I'm gonna kind of. I've been kind of pitching that a little bit to sure. Patty. I'm, I'm on the transit commission. We kind of talked about that a little bit. I don't know how far that'll go or when, but you know. Like to see, like to promote more busking, more of a street. Yeah. So, uh, so my friend Ken Dennison, he does a lot of that, and uh, Chris Rogowski, who is in the band with my brother, he does a lot of that. Uh, they they go to the, uh, the both of the farmers markets, yep. and they play there. So I'm sure you've probably seen these yep. guys. I'm sure I've given yeah. them some money. I uh, always carry a bunch of ones, and uh, I try to hit everyone and, and, yeah. and support that. I, <laughs> I really enjoy busking. I think it adds a lot of atmosphere to a city, and, and that was one of the great things about you know. A big city, as you get a lot of that. Yeah. So, and I've been to big cities, and I've seen street musicians, and I'm so sheltered and naive. I didn't know it was called busking until <laughs> until the musicians in my life, you know, set me straight. So I think a lot of people don't know that. And so busking is like when when you grab your guitar and you open your case and you, yeah. people throw money in it and you're playing on the street. Street, yeah. Or it, yeah. Uh, it could be anything, any kind of, you know. It could right. Be, you know, uh, any instrument. My any, brother plays drums, and he's well. Been, he's it could even there. be juggling, clowning. Uh, could be. There's one artist. Who, are, you, are you trying to convince me to go out and do yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want to see the clown nose. <laughs> Uh, there's one artist who actually, you know, does the statue. Absolutely. You know, yeah. which I, I think is a. I phenomenal. think that's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Freaks uh, me out every time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I try to get little kids to give them money so yeah. that they, you know. So more watching. busking. So is there anything that uh, that anybody can do to kind of further that? What do you think? I don't know. I'm still kind of feeling my way around that. Like I said, you know, I'm trying to see what if we could promote busking on, the, on, on on our transit. I'd like to see, you know, uh, if we could just open up busking to not just events, but, it, you know. So, yeah, are there time. permit problems with that? There, there there might be. I haven't, you know. Yeah. You know. I think so. that's the thing that holds people back. They, they don't want to go out there and get in trouble. Probably, yeah. Well, yeah. And they shouldn't. <laughs> right. 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 You know, that's but, a, that's always a problem. Like, the, like ignorance of the law is no excuse. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so you're not, but you're, so there are some issues or you don't know? I don't know. I, I, I want to, I just, on that. yeah. I, Cause you, you should know. Yes, I should. Or you should make it not a rule. Right. Right. You know? That's what I want to, I need to talk to some people and see you know, cause to... I, some of the, some of these laws we have in place, they could be a hundred years old and yeah. you know, the world changes. And, uh, sometimes I think it might be best to just throw the rule out and see what becomes a problem and have new rules Ooh. develop as, you know, mm-hmm. when, you know, uh, I don't know. I have no idea. And uh, like, I've lived here my whole life. I don't know if there's <laughs> rules about it. I think that's a problem. I think that's kind of a problem yeah. Yeah. when I don't even know if yeah. I'm breaking the law. Like, yeah. that's weird. Well, we, and we are, uh, the city is trying to update its, its uh, technology. Yeah. And I think we're hoping to, uh, the, uh, city page, we become more of a resource page where people can go and find things out and, and do things. Cool. So, yeah, that'd be that'd be great. Let me know when they get that done. <laughs> <laughs> They're working. They're working. No, I know. It's and, an, and you know, with technology, it's an ongoing thing. You know, sure. They're never done. No, but, and uh, but there's a lot we can do. I feel like uh, the mayor's done a great job with that kind of stuff. Uh, like uh, uh, Chris was great. Chris Rand. Chris Rand. Yeah. He was, yeah. <laughs> He, like, I'm whatever. I want to be king of the nerds. And, you know, when somebody <laughs> out nerds me, like Nick or like Chris, it kind of makes me a little bit um, sad. Makes me a little Aww. sad, but uh, but uh, uh, like Chris was an amazing guy to have. Like what yeah. a um, like really, I, I believe like Green Bay is worse off now that he's gone, and he moved to I think North Carolina. No, uh, Virginia, South, Virginia. I, yeah, they're all, they're they're all the same. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> East, Coasters. East Coasters. Yeah. I'm sorry, Virginia. That's right. I, I do remember that. Some I have family that moved to North Carolina. Um, so uh, busking. Any anything else? Do you think that we could get to make a uh, you know, make our downtown, make our, it doesn't have to be downtown. You know, we have, we tend to be kind of downtown centric. Like, you know, I've heard that as a criticism. Right. I, of course, am biased, but I, you know, I feel like our downtown was neglected for 20, 30 years. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, uh, so I feel like we kind of have, you know, we got to yeah. make up for lost time. Yeah. Well, they're starting to, uh, further out, like I know on uh, on military, yeah. they're starting to do more events out that way and everything. So, yeah. I, I, and I think East Town Mall's got potential. We could just start doing stuff out that way and everything. Nice. So I, 
I think there's always room for growth. So do you think it's time to kind of move, like not not change the focus, but expand? Or do you think there's more stuff we need to do downtown? Well, I, well there's always more stuff to do downtown. There's, yeah. Downtown is never done. Yeah. You know, you know it's an ongoing process. It's like, what are we missing? What do you think we're missing? Uh, I talk well, about what I think all the time. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, uh, you, you never want to stop development. I mean, you, you're never done with development. You know, that's that's an ongoing process, and it takes so long. That's one thing, uh, once I got this job, that I did not realize is <laughs> development takes so long and is so complicated, and there's just one little thing can hold it up. And, uh, I mean, look at the Northland Hotel. That's a sure. fantastic project, but it's a complex one, and they've had one thing thrown at them after another, the poor guys, and uh, they're just chomping at the bit to get going. And, uh and I think they're going to, you know, that's going to happen soon and it's going to be great. But, you know, so it's a, just an ongoing process. You always want to keep developing, you know. Uh, you never stop. Yeah. So, so any amenities we're missing? Amenities. Or anything like that? I don't know. Well, I, I would like to see us become uh, more technologic, more techno. Oh, boy. I ain't going to say it. <laughs> you, you sort more of did. Techno. You kind of did it. More, for- yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> more techno. And also, I'd like, to see, uh, I'd like to see the green in Green Bay. I'd like to yeah. see us become a lot greener. I mean, okay. there's a lot of new technologies out there that are, that are happening. Uh, uh, I don't know if you've heard of the solar roads. Yeah. Yeah, so I, you know, I, I, I don't think they're quite there yet where we could actually do our roads, but maybe uh, we're working on an East River Trail. Uh, I'm wondering if maybe that isn't a place where we could start maybe with a solar roadway sure. is on the trail. Uh, yeah. I know in Denmark uh, they've done that, so we've got something to go by. Uh, so uh, uh, I'd like to see us definitely become much more green. I'd I, get like ex- I, I get excited about solar. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and I think even downtown we could go greener. There's not a lot of uh, greenery, you know. Uh, so, you know, we're very critical, you know, and I, and I hate to make things sound uh, bad, um, but I, I think we hold our own. I think we, we actually kind of do have a green downtown. You know, there there's there's worse. I've seen worse. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, in our own country, but, you right. know, you've been to other right. countries yeah. where well, it's... I'm not saying it's bad. I, I know, just like to I see know. it more. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not putting words in your mouth. I don't mean to. Um, so, um, so I, there's a common question that people say, like, what scares you the most, right? Um, I don't want to ask that. <laughs> I want to do the flip side because I want to focus on positive, positive. things, okay, right? Yeah. Um, so um, what scares most people that you think you just take in stride? Oh, what scares most people? That's the first question to ask. What, what, well, do, you, what do you think scares well, most people? Well, the top two things are uh, public speaking and death, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Public speaking, that I have no problem with public speaking. I've had you don't plenty say. of experience. <laughs> not a problem, public speaking. Uh, you know, and as a teacher, right. you, get, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely doing that all the time. Uh, so public speaking's okay. Uh, death, yeah. Death sucks. <laughs> I, 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 See, I, no, what things do you I, handle fine? fine. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 uh, uh, you know, with, with death. Um, you're you know, t- you're think, turning into a politician. I know, I know. I think with death, I used, dodging. To be, I used to be a lot more afraid of death. Now I don't really focus on, on the dying end. I just look at the, the living end. Absolutely. Because death is going to be Absolutely. like that. Usually, yeah. 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 Well, even when you know you're going in, you're right. going slow, it's still. That's true like yep. that it's on or off yeah on or off <laughs> and uh good perspective yeah. so i just focus on the living part and and uh as far as others dying you know that's uh i've i've had a lot of to deal with a lot of death yeah uh matter of fact when i was young we used to make a joke uh the the adults did that uh, instead of having a family get together every year we just wait for the next person to die because it seemed like every year i know we got together for a death right. Um, and, and, uh, for me, it's just an ongoing process. You're never, right. you're never done grieving. Yeah. Uh, you, you never want to let go completely. So I was listening to a, uh, uh, I listened to a lot of podcasts. You'd think I'd be better at this. <laughs> um, but the, uh, uh, it was, there was a show about, um, like a three generation funeral, like, uh, you know, funeral home place mm-hmm. and uh um sort of like you know we talk about people want to get out of green bay just get a, a different experience but then you know things pulling back this this guy i think he's around 30 and uh maybe maybe a little older even um but his his father and his grandfather are still kind of involved and 
um, he went, he, he took another job somewhere and he came back and fascinating. And I forgot the name of it, but it was, uh, uh we listened to it on the way up to our family reunion, uh, uh, uh coincidentally. Who died? Uh, nobody died. <laughs> good, uh, good. Uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it, but it made us think of all those things. It was really, uh, um, and we were out of like cell range. I couldn't get any music, you know, on my iPhone. Yeah. So like this was already recorded. So that so I so I made uh, Gina and and Kyle listen to that, and they were not happy because um, <laughs> it was it was kind of a downer, but it was fascinating. So yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, so that did not expect that. So uh, I kind of want that that kind of brings me to the next question, which is. Uh, I've already been surprised. I didn't know you're a world traveler. I really actually didn't know you were a teacher. Um, and I'm kind of ashamed to admit that. Oh. Uh, like, I feel like I should know a little more about you. But <laughs> um, so what is something that other people would be surprised to, to learn about you that we haven't talked about already? Uh, surprised to learn about me. Uh, I don't know. I'm pretty out there. I don't really have a lot of secrets, you know. Uh <laughs> Or something that, you you know, so what's surprising sometimes is like something that you might like that other people might not know that you like. Or uh, uh, I like The Clash. That, see, that's great. <laughs> that's that's where I'm going. Great, great. You know, uh, so you like some you like some good uh, pop punk. Pop, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, good. Uh, in fact, now let me do a, uh, a plug okay. for the uh, punk movie that's going on. Have you yeah. heard I, about that on Facebook? Uh, with what's it called? James Baker. Oh, what's I got to check the Facebook. It, it's, yeah, actually, we, we talked about it quite a bit. Oh, good. Uh, yeah, yeah, because uh, uh, Gina is fr- friends with all those people. Oh, great. Um, so, uh, no, but talk more. It's your show. Uh, Oh, so say what you know about it. Not a lot. Oh. So well, <laughs> I need to. I I know James Baker. Yeah, and he's a big part of it. And so, I've been following it on Facebook and pushing. Right now they're just yeah. looking for money. Yeah. So there's a Kickstarter campaign, and Gina yelled at me that I didn't have the podcast out already. It's over though. Because it's over. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I didn't. You know, there's really nothing to plug now. Well, if they, I don't know if they got enough money or not. I haven't looked yet. But if they didn't, maybe they'll put it back out there. there. I should hope oh. so. Oh, Nick is researching oh, good, 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 good for it. Man. We have our crack team on it. There we go. <laughs> Sorry, the website's blocked. Oh. I was trying to do research, oh. but I'm on the company network. Right, 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 right. Oh, oh. Sorry. Okay. No, no, that's cool. Um, all right. Uh, so you like The Clash and you like that that whole kind of stuff. I'm excited about that movie because like I, through Gina mostly, but uh, maybe even separately, I know some of those people. So that's, it's super exciting. Yeah. yeah. yeah I, okay. I, I have it now. Okay. Oh. My cell phone works. Ah, um, nice. Nice. So right on greenblawfilm.com, it says the Kickstarter campaign was a huge success. Oh, there we okay. go. I made so, a contribution, so. Their goal was 16,000 in 30 days. They raised 19,500. Nice. So is he going to give some back? Well, <laughs> Well, like we talked about before, video production is expensive. So yeah, it can yeah. be, yeah. Oh, yeah so, yeah, yeah. so extra. you know, maybe you got to give them a call and say, "Hey, we can help you out." There you are. Yeah. Oh, there you yeah. go. Yeah, yeah. Because um, I don't know where they're going to go cheaper. Like you probably could help them out. Um, so uh, some of this stuff might feel like repeats. That was a great answer, though. You love oh. the clash. See, I'm super surprised about that. <laughs> and I feel like I feel like I kind of I kind of know you, you know. But like, so that I'm surprised, but yet not right. Yeah. Um, so what are you most looking forward to over the next 20 years? What I'm looking forward to, I'm looking. I would love to be able to move downtown myself personally. I'm looking for more, more exciting, more bigger, more interesting Green Bay. Nice. You know, I, I think we're becoming a bigger city. And I always wanted to live in a bigger city. Right. And, and uh, I think in 20 years, there's going to be a lot of changes in Green Bay and a lot of good, positive, exciting changes. Yeah, I do too. So uh, that's one reason I say, you know, get involved now because it's happening now. And it's so much right. fun So I part of it. I talk all the time about, uh, like, you know, cell phones, you know, smartphones like I have in my hand. Yeah. You know, the, uh, like everyone has in their hands, yeah. right? They've sort of transformed the world in less than a decade. Yeah. Right, yeah. and I feel like self-driving vehicles are going to be much more transformative. My next vehicle is going to be a self-driving vehicle. Okay, so you're kind of on top of that too, yeah. and excited. Um, but like um, parking, like we, you know, uh, we had a controversy about the Walmart downtown yeah. because partly because there's going to have to be a giant parking lot. Yeah. Um, parking lots might be able to go away if we have self-driving taxis. Yeah. You get dropped off, and the car goes away and goes yeah. and gets somebody else. Right. Yeah. So I'm super excited about that, and I feel like uh, Green Bay's focus on our downtown right now over the next 20 years is we're primed for success where other other cities might not be able to do that or they're not focusing at the right things on the right time and uh you know it's been slow for me to to kind of get to that 
that mind frame of of all of that progress. But like, I'm like, let's just build buildings on top of buildings because we don't need the roads. Right. right. Um, yeah. People can walk and they yeah. can get self driving cars. So yeah. I'm super excited about yeah. that. So I agree. So uh, so that's for Green Bay. What are you excited about? Like, what are you looking forward to otherwise? Well, grandkids would be nice. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> we have some, but yeah. more. You know. Uh, uh, so what are their names? The grandkids? The kids, the grandkids. Okay, grandkids. Yeah. okay we got Give Hannah. them a shout out. I need listeners. Hanny, Hannah, <laughs> Frankie Jr., and uh, Miles. Nice. You know, uh, but that's just from one, you know, everybody else has got to start picking up. <laughs> yeah. So my uh, uh, my grandmother's maiden name is Miles. So we have oh. every, I'm going to get it wrong now. I think it's every three years they have a big Miles family reunion. and People come from Miles? Well, that, and that's the joke, right? Yeah, so that's yeah, all, yeah, yeah so that's yeah. a nice that's plan. That's too easy. Right, but. right. No, and no, and, and it's, it, you know, we played on that yeah, a little bit. Yeah. But uh, it's amazing, like nobody's name, last name is Miles anymore. There's there's one family of Miles and like that's, that's it. And they happen to live in North Carolina. No. So that's kind of interesting. Yeah, no. not really. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting for me. Uh, so, uh, kind of the last question here. Okay. Uh, unless you, Nick want, maybe Nick has a question. Nobody gave me any questions on Facebook because I didn't think to to do it right away. Yeah, you really gotta do that that poll sooner. I know. I know. Like a day or two before, maybe. Okay. <laughs> so you noticed I'm late at everything. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, you know, it doesn't hurt me at all. No, I know, but if I you know. want social questions. Yeah. So, I mean, I like the questions I've been asking. That's why I repeated them because, you know, I've come up with other things and I'm like, eh, I kind of like that, actually. Yeah. So it works out I, okay. I enjoyed the question. And and you know what? If I, if I run out of questions, then I have to have you back. So that, that works out too for me. Um, but uh, so the one that I kind of closed with, with Gina and Rhonda and got great answers was uh, if you could co-host any episode in the future, which guest would you want to be my co-host with? Who would you want to ask questions of? Oh. See, and then I use that, and then I go get them. Get me. Oh. <laughs> well, I don't know if you'd be able to get, you know. Uh, so my only rule. So, oh, it's got to be someone that's. It, so it, it has to be someone that I either know or could know, like very okay. easily. Like, you know, yeah. so like, yeah. yeah, of course, you know, we'll have Barack Obama on someday. But, yeah. you know, it's probably going to be episode 10,000. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How about James Baker? James Baker? That yeah. would be a great one. Yeah. Okay. That, that'd yeah. be fun. So the guy putting on the yeah. the, the new punk movie for yeah. Green Bay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, should have got this going earlier because it would have helped him out. <laughs> not, like not, Now he's probably like, well, gee, thanks. thanks. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, there's yeah. still, uh, they still uh, promote the movie and everything once they get it yeah. all done and everything. So there's still plenty of time to, yeah. um, you know. Yeah. So how do you know him? And <laughs> He and I not? worked together at Cub Foods. Nice. You know, okay. Back in the day before See? I was a teacher, I did a lot of retail work. I am I, convinced I this town grocery. this town is two degrees of separated Safe, for everybody. Yeah. Like if I don't know you, I know someone who knows you. Know you. <laughs> it's so crazy. So Super crazy. So that's all I got. Uh, so uh, Nick is going to run that last track, I think, and that one is called Swordfish, and that's also from Tone Logic. So I only had I had two MP3s from my brother's old band, <laughs> and so that's what I have because nobody else gave me anything. I have to get out there. Early. Doesn't have anything to do with the movie, does it? Swordfish. No, I I don't think so. That's just the name. It's I th- and I think it's just instrumental. Although I think they sang over the top once. I don't know. So this is it, Tone Logic. Thanks, Randy. Yep, thanks for having me. Thank you. Good fun.